and it hurts game 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 what's going on you guys thank y'all so much for tuning in so this week Volkswagen has sent me the 2019 Jetta SEL Premium. Really enjoyed my week with this car. This will be my full in-depth review. So I'm going to go over the interior, the exterior, all of its features. And at the end of the video, I'm going to take it for a drive and show you guys why this is possibly the most comfortable compact sedan that you can currently buy. Now it was windy the day that I filmed this. So as you guys can see, I'm going to have to do a voiceover for the exterior part of the video. So starting with the color, that is called sage green metallic. It is seriously the most beautiful green I've ever seen, aside from maybe the dark highland green off of like the bullet Mustang. But if you're not a green fan, there's a good chance that you're really going to like this green in the flesh or in the metal, whatever you want to call it. But coming to the front, you do have an all new front end. So you have a bunch of horizontal lines which really widen the car and make it look a lot wider than it really is. New bumpers, and then coming to the lights, you're going to have LED lights. So you have LED low beams, you're going to have LED high beams, and you have an LED daytime running light that's going to go around the outside of the light housing. And then you don't have LED fog lamps though. So if you're hoping for LED fog lamps, you are not going to get them on this new Jetta. You also don't have LED turn signals. Now at the bottom of the grill, you do have a little area for air to get in because this is turbocharged. So it needs to feed that intercooler. And then coming to the hood, uh, it's a good looking hood. It just looks very like Ford Fusion or very A5. It actually looks like they stole the hood straight off the A5, which would make sense because you know, Volkswagen, Audi, same group, all that stuff. Coming to the wheels, you do have these interesting wheels, which almost look like aero wheels that you would find on like an electric car. But from a side profile, they actually fit the vehicle really well. They look good. Um, I like that kind of almost rose gold tint that they have. And the coolest thing about this car are the lines. Look how thick they are. And you can just really get a sharp feel from this car just by like physically touching the lines. They like almost feel sharp. It's crazy how thick and how much depth they have. So coming to the back, a uh, very simplistic design. You do have LED tail lamps, which have this interesting like three dot pattern underneath. Not really sure what that's supposed to do or represent. You do have fake exhaust tips. And then you have your glorious exhaust underneath that, as you guys can see. But let's go ahead and check out the rest of the car. All right, getting into the Jetta is super easy. Here's your key, lock, unlock, trunk release. That is it, really simple. Um, you're going to have your panic button here on the side with a little guy running away, which is kind of funny. But yeah, so you can unlock it with the key or you can use the touch sensitive areas on the door handle very easy see this little indent there put your thumb over that that'll lock it and there's a touch sensor behind here there you go all right so starting at the door pretty simplistic door you've got some leather padding right here you have this interesting uh, weave pattern going right there you can kind of barely see it through there uh, soft touch up here going to have some piano black here with your lock and your unlock buttons uh, really solid sturdy plastic handle there all of your window buttons which are going to feel a little bit on the cheap side just basic black plastic nothing special you do have your heated mirrors there so you turn it all the way to that setting to do your heated mirrors Pretty deep cubbies right here, though it does get a little thin once you get towards the back. You have this interesting pattern, which is going to run right into the speaker, and then your trunk release is going to be right there. Now you do have memory seats on there. You actually have three settings for memory seats, which is actually uh, the most I've seen on most cars. Even luxury cars, most of them only come with two settings. So the fact that you have three settings is pretty neat. Lumbar, your back and forth, your back tilt right there. You do have these perforations in the middle. And a lot more once you get to the top. Pretty 
decent seat design. You can see they have a pretty good amount of bolstering and they are very wide. So if you are a little bit heavier set, I'm very thin, six feet tall. So I do have a little bit of wiggle room, but if you are a bigger set person, you're going to fit just fine in these. Tilt telescope for your steering wheel. You guys can see a little bit of that ambient lighting underneath here. And then of course your lights right there. But let's go ahead and hop in and check out the rest. All right, and your push button is going to be right over here. And you're just gonna push that to start the car. Foot in the brake. Cool, there you go. All right, starting with the steering wheel. The steering wheel is gonna look very familiar because they have it in almost every single Volkswagen product, just a slightly different variation depending on which vehicle, but you've got a real thin steering wheel, some black, uh, piano black down here, a little bit of chrome accenting, Volkswagen symbol there in the middle. Over here to the left, you're going to have your cruise control, radar cruise control, you do have that, um, and then your volume buttons down here, and over to the right, you're going to have all of your corresponding buttons to control your Volkswagen virtual cockpit right here. So using these buttons, if you guys can get a good look right here, I can hit this view button, it'll change the view just like that, very, very cool. And I can scroll through to adjust what menus I wanna see in the middle. And then within that, I can actually scroll up and down to see different things like uh, economy, range, speed, oil temperature, all that good stuff. So it's a pretty neat setup, uh, really like it. And of course, I'll show you guys a little bit later, but when you change the colors of the ambient lighting, it actually changes the colors on these. Behind here you are going to have your lighting controls and your blinkers. You do have um, adaptive front high beams on here as well and you're going to have um, rain sensing windshield wipers on here as well. And of course you pull towards you to activate the spray thing. Coming here you've got a really cool design with more of that textured material, some piano black, soft touch leather, leather up here with some fake stitching going through there um, but it still looks Pretty decent. You have your speaker for your Beats audio system right there. Real clean design coming right all the way over here. Now the screen is super hardcore angled, so it's just all facing the driver. It's a very driver centric area. I really like it a lot. Uh, the feedback is really good. It does detect when your finger is coming up to the screen. So if I barely get close to it, you can see it anticipates my actions basically. But yeah, you can go through here. It's very responsive. You can swipe through, adjust your sound, adjust all of your different settings accordingly. And then you can go through your car settings right here. That's how you turn off your traction control, um, personalize anything you want to, adjust your lights, parking, uh, your ambient lighting right there, which you can choose from all of these different colors, which looks really nice. And it's very vivid, very bright lighting. And it just does a great job of lighting up the cabin and it's a very airy cabin to begin with. So adding that lighting in there just gives it a really, really upscale experience. It's very nice, I like it a lot. Vents down here, heated and cooled seats. Now the funny part is, I guess you can turn on both at the same time, because usually if I push the cooled seats, it'll turn this off, but it has both on. So that's a little strange, same thing with this side. So I guess you can have your heated and cooled seats at the same time if you can't make up your mind if you're hot and cold. But yeah, that's pretty interesting. Dual zone climate control. Fan speed right there in the middle. A little bit of area here. You don't have a wireless charging pad or anything like that, but you do have uh, Apple CarPlay, so you can plug it into that area right there. This shifter has basically been the same since like early 2008, 2009. This is a pretty classic Volkswagen shifter with your silver accent in the middle and then your leather on the side. Stop it over to the right to put it into manual mode. It is an eight speed auto. It's not a dual clutch or anything like that. It's just a quick shifting eight speed automatic. And then you're going to pull back to put it into its sport mode, at, what, at which point it'll show you an S there. And if you pull back again, boom, puts you into drive. Very simple, go into reverse, have your backup camera. You don't have a 360 camera or anything like that. And the resolution quality is pretty 
basic, nothing, nothing special there in terms of uh, resolution quality or anything really unique with the backup camera. Electronic parking brake right there. Your automatic start stop feature, which actually works um, more often than other vehicles that I've driven. So it does a good job of constantly going into where um, it turns the engine off and it does a great job of starting back up. There's not a ton of lag or anything like that. So really nice. You hit this mode button. That'll take you through your different driving modes. You have eco, which shows your little leaves, normal, sport, which has a little racetrack, which is kind of cool. Doing a little burnout, even though this isn't rear wheel drive. And you are also going to have your custom mode, which is going to have a little bit of everything, which is kind of cool. Coming down here, you have your cup holders. If it's a small cup of coffee, no big deal. Um, they're oddly shaped, definitely like more like, what is that, pentagon shaped? Maybe I got that wrong. But anyways, they're oddly shaped, which is interesting. But they are slightly different levels as well. I'm not sure if that helps at all. But you also have an area here where I can put like my wallet or something like that. Uh, the armrest is slightly oddly shaped, so if the driver is going to have a little bit more of versatility as far as putting my arm up here or putting my elbow back here whereas the passenger you have a little bit more of like an awkward shorter area to play with but it's very soft padded as you guys can see there lift that up you do have a usb port in there and pretty deep storage space but you also have a little indent so you can pass a cord through as well now coming in here one cool thing is that you do have a cd player so if you guys can see that a CD player up there and then two SD card slots which are basically going to be for your navigation. Auto dimming mirror. You don't have home link on this one. Not sure if you can really get it on the Jetta in the first place. Uh, you don't have LED lights either, just normal lighting. The slowest sunglass holder I've ever seen open. and it's done. Literally the slowest I've ever seen, but no big deal. You can just pull it down if you're impatient. Now, looking up here, you've got this big, beautiful uh, sunroof, moonroof, and you have this cover, it's sort of like a screen. You can see that there. Um, it doesn't let in a ton of light, so it's not like a huge deal. A lot of people I have heard say that it lets in more light than they would like, um, but I kind of like it, it keeps the cabin nice and airy and uh, it's a real nice screen it's got some good tinning on it so it's just it just looks beautiful I really like it, it makes the cabin feel super airy and it's really nice you have a vanity mirror here with a card holder your lights gonna be right up there and yeah that's pretty much going to be it for the front seat let's go ahead and hop in the back seat and check out the room all right so let's hop into the back seat of the Jetta now climbing in I'm six feet tall. I've got the front seat set to my driving position. So sitting behind myself, being six feet tall, that's about how much room I have. Roughly about mm, two, two and a half inches of knee room. Not a big deal. The feet room is great. So my feet fit really nice under here. I have a good amount of room. Uh, the door materials are definitely a lot more lower grade in the front uh, you have hard touch plastic right here you're going to have hard touch plastic here a little bit of soft touch here and that's about the extent of the soft touch materials everything else is just hard scratchy plastic and then you've got a bottle holder here and a little bit of extra storage space as well you don't have a mat pocket on this side you only have it on this side right over here no air vents as well you do however have your handles up here and a hook so you can hang up dry cleaning or anything like that you have lights back here as well. Now folding down this middle armrest, you're going to have two cup holders and probably the softest armrest I've ever felt. I mean, check this out. It is so soft. It's like I could use it as a pillow. It's crazy. And yeah, that's pretty much the extent for the back seat. Um, you get a cool view of the front as always when you're in the back seat. Uh, but other than that, it's pretty basic back here. As far as headroom goes, I'll turn so you guys can see. So, hey everyone, here's my headroom. If you can see that, hopefully it's focused. But yeah, I probably barely have room. My, my uh, hair is definitely touching. 
it's about the width of my fingers is how much room I have in between or sitting back here. So not a ton, but it is a compact sedan. So I uh, don't really expect much, but let's go ahead and check out the trunk and see the space we're working with. All right, so getting into the trunk of the Jetta, you have a button right underneath the symbol. You push that and it will open, but I've already popped the trunk. Now, one thing is that you have to push it and push it up and it'll kind of click into place and hold it there for you, which is really nice. Now, coming back here, I do have a hitch. Um, that was from when I filmed the Silverado. Went to go grab the hitch because I left it on there. But anyways, really good amount of room. Here's the cubic feet so you guys can take a look at that if you want to compare. You do have your fold down there, so you can pull that to fold down the seats. It is a 60-40 split. And then now underneath here, you are going to have your spare, and you have a sub for your sound system, your Beats Audio sound system. Don't really notice it, actually, when I'm listening to the uh, radio. It just kind of sounds like uh, a pretty cheap-sounding thunk in the back. It's not really the best. But let's go ahead and check under the hood and see what we're working with there. All right, so under the hood of the Jetta, you only have one engine option. It's going to be this 1.4 liter turbocharged four cylinder that's going to make 147 horsepower, 184 pound feet of torque. Now that doesn't sound like a lot of power at all, but I guarantee you guys, this thing feels very underrated. Um, as a matter of fact, there's two caveats to why that is. First, it's going to be the weight of the vehicle, and second, it's going to be the RPM at which the torque comes in very low rpm and surprisingly very low weight on this car i'll tell you guys those exact numbers in just a second in the driving portion of the video but it does make for a very quick vehicle um, now the mpg is going to be here on the screen 30 mpg in the city 40 mpg on the highway once again that is slightly underrated based off of my testing when i take this on a trip to dallas in just a second you guys will see that but overall this is a very impressive um, just everyday sedan. It's actually been very impressive the week that I've had it. It is hooked up to an eight speed automatic transmission. It's not a DSG, it's just going to be a normal quick shifting eight speed automatic. And of course, all the power is going to go to the front wheels only. But guys, before I take it out for a drive, if you are liking this video, be sure to give it a huge thumbs up. If you guys are new to my channel, be sure to subscribe below. I have new content every single week. So be sure you guys hit that notification bell so you never miss an upload. Now let's go ahead and get this thing on the road. All right, so I'm about to take a trip from Fort Worth, Texas to Carrollton, Texas. It's about a 55 minute drive, about a 40 something mile trip, but I reset everything. So as you guys can see here, everything is zeroed out. So I'm really going to see what the miles per gallon I can get. I do like this because it does show me my average speed and the exact distance that I traveled. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here we are behind the wheel of the 2019 Volkswagen Jetta. Now I'm driving to Dallas right now. So as you guys saw, I am taking a trip to Dallas. Um, I have it in eco mode. So it is in its eco mode to see how it is on trips. Most people I would suggest with this vehicle it's a great commuter car. It is a very comfortable vehicle. One downside, as you guys can hear, there is a lot of road noise and just a lot of noise in general that comes in. It's pretty on the loud side in here. I'm having to raise my voice just a little bit. Now, I do want to touch on the numbers once again because they're actually pretty impressive if you think about it. So, 147 horsepower, 184 pound-feet of torque. Now that 184 pound-feet of torque comes in at just 1400 RPMs. That is super low. That is extremely low and that's a good amount of torque. Now the other thing that's impressive is this vehicle is probably the lightest in the class. The maximum curb weight for this car, so fully loaded as is, weighs about 2970 pounds. That's even lighter than a Mazda 3. This car is very light, and the crazy part is that I think it's probably one of the biggest um, compact cars you can get. So there's so much room, it's so big, but it's so light, and you can really feel that in the steering. Especially in eco mode, it feels like an absolute feather. Um, now you do have all of your adaptive cruise control features, so very simple. 
I just turn on my cruise control here. I hit set, try that again. Hit set, there we go. So right now it's set to 60 and I can use this to take it to, let's say 67. Um, and I'm just hanging out on the highway. I can hit this middle button to adjust my different lengths behind the vehicles in front of me. So I usually do about two. Now we have some traffic or some kind of braking going on here. Not sure what's going on. I guess everyone's trying to exit. But yeah, clear pathway, very nice. My feet are off the gas and the brake. Really, really relaxing. Um, you do have like a lane keep, so it does a very good job. It almost works as good as like a semi-autopilot. So um, if I turn it on, right there, perfect. So it says it's on now, so if I just kind of let it drift, it should pull me back in. So it works pretty well, and it'll kind of ping pong you back and forth a few times before it tells you to take control of the steering wheel, which I have done now. Uh, very nice. I will admit the ride on this is actually very supple, very smooth. It's about as comfortable um, suspension wise as a Toyota Camry. It is that comfortable. It's very, very surprising. I mean, it just feels very floaty, very smooth. So it's not really a an extremely sporty feel. It does feel sporty at times, but for the most part, I've realized with this car, it's a fantastic, just everyday, just really nice sedan. Uh, it's done a great job at that. Now if we throw it in sport, steering gets noticeably heavier. Not too crazy, it's still a little bit on the lighter side. But the best part is you just barely dip into the gas and you have more than enough power to pass, which is great because you know you see 147 horsepower on paper and it doesn't look very impressive and in your, in your mind you really think it's just gonna be a dog. You're gonna have to just get on it all the time. But because of the fact that um, torque comes in at such an incredibly low RPM, it's absolutely effortless to get this thing moving. So if I wanted to pass this white car here, I just, you know, a little bit down on the gas and that's plenty of power to pass. It's very impressive. And a lot of that really is due to the fact that this car is so light. As a matter of fact, if you get the base model version of this, you're talking somewhere in the neighborhood of 2,700 pounds, which is very, very light, even by, um, by today's standards, it's really light. I'm gonna turn cruise control back on so I can kind of show you guys this real quick. Now, you have your Beats audio sound system, which sounds pretty good. It's not the best sound system I've ever heard, but it's pretty, pretty decent. You've got a really nice look around the cabin. It feels very airy. You've got a real big windshield, um, decent sized mirrors left and right. Don't worry, I have the lane keep on, so it's kind of keeping me in the middle of the lane. Uh, you do have your little uh, sunroof here or moonroof whatever you want to call it and it's a beautiful overcast day today so it looks really nice the view out the back isn't too bad you actually don't have that much of a blind spot if you guys can see that there and yeah it's a very comfortable place to be the steering wheel is very thin uh, so it just fits really well in your hands it doesn't feel sporty at all once again it just feels like the normal Jetta steering wheel that you've had basically for the past few years, but just ever so slightly revised. The seats are comfortable. They have a actually decent amount of bolstering to them, so they hold you in. If you are going around the corners, you're not feeling like you're just sliding around in your seat a lot. And yeah, it's a really good vehicle. You know, if you're looking for something that's just very comfortable, now with Volkswagen, they've got that impressive uh, seven year. Uh, limited car warranty which is I think the best in the business right now when you're talking about your bumper to bumper limited vehicle warranty uh, so you do have that backing you up so I know Volkswagens especially the Jettas have not really been known for their uh, reliability and you know this one is definitely a really good proposition you know fully loaded at around twenty six twenty seven thousand dollars that's actually not bad and you get a very quality feeling vehicle so I'll let you guys know what MPG I get once I get to Dallas. Now one thing to note, this adaptive cruise does come to a complete stop, so it is very handy whenever you are in traffic. 
So right now I'm literally going three, four miles an hour, five miles an hour, as you guys can see there. Probably about to come to a complete stop. And it just picks right back up, which is great. So here are the figures after my drive. So the distance was exactly 50 miles. Uh, let's see here. I got 42.2 miles per gallon and it averaged about 55. Now I feel like that average is not super accurate. I was definitely driving between 70 and 75 a good chunk of the time, but there was uh, a period when I had to go through traffic and I was going like three, four, five miles an hour. So I think that made it drop significantly. So just know driving normal speeds, which is what I was doing. So anywhere between 60 and 70, 75 miles an hour was pretty much what I was driving at least 50% of the time. But I think that traffic just really less than that average but yeah there you guys go really impressive fuel economy and when this thing's on the highway it just feels so light it's like it's just cutting through the wind it's actually very very efficient and you can just feel that in the car it just feels so light when you're on the highway it's really impressive well that's going to conclude my review of the 2019 volkswagen jetta sel premium thoroughly enjoyed my time with this incredible compact sedan if you want something that's very spacious for the class, if you want something that is very smooth on the roads and just has a very overall premium feel, this is definitely one to put on your list of vehicles to take a look at. I really enjoyed the fuel economy figures that I returned. I enjoyed the ride. I enjoyed lots of factors about it. Uh, there are some things I wish it had, like a little bit more of a sporty nature, but if sportiness isn't your main concern, this is definitely a very good option. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. I have new videos every single week. And like this video if you guys enjoyed it. But thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you next video.